So today I'm looking at how you can make your own dream booth. This is dream booth from Google research where you give input images of a subject, three to five images, and using a diffusion model, you can then place that subject in all sorts of scenery scenarios. And here are some examples. And like it says, it's like a photo booth, but once the subject is captured, it can be synthesized wherever your dreams take you. And this is the kind of technology that's been used by apps like Lenza AI to reportedly bring in a million dollars a day in revenue, generating profile photos very much like this. And so we're gonna look at how we can do this using open source code and models like Stable Diffusion. And there is a newer version of Stable Diffusion, but we're just going to use a older version for now. But that's a great thing. You can actually do this with the newer versions as well. And the way to get started is with signing up to Hugging Face. You need an account and you need to accept the license for the model that we're going to use. So you need to accept the license for Stable Diffusion and then we'll be able to use it. So I will include this link in the description. This is a Google Colab notebook, which allows you to get going with Dream Booth and created by this GitHub account. It's a fork of the example from Hugging Face. And you spin this up in your Google Colab account. So you need a Google account. And then here I've copied it and I haven't done anything except run the first two cells. So if you're not familiar with notebooks, then it's generally Python code and you have these cells that you can run and you'll get the output and you can put in documentation and so on and share these notebooks. So what I'm going to do is run through how you can go from virtually scratch to having your own dream booth. So to prepare for this, you just need some images of a subject. And so I took five pictures of uh, my son's toy robot and we're gonna send it on holiday. So we can see that we've got Tesla T4 GPU 15, gigs of RAM, great. And I've already connected the notebook to my Google Drive because I'm going to use it to store weights and so on. And so in order to run any of these cells, you just click this play button or command enter will also do it. So you just go through from top to bottom, start by installing the requirements. You're getting your Colab instance set up and whenever something takes a very long time, I'll skip the output. But just in the beginning, you're installing Python libraries that are required. Some of these are from Hugging Face for just making everything a bit faster, parallelizing the work. And then there is logging into Hugging Face. So I am going to do that. And then I'm going to skip forward because you should not share your tokens. Okay, so I logged into Hugging Face by taking my token from their site, pasting it here, running the cell. I've now deleted that value so it's not shown. And so I continue installing libraries. And some work is being done to make sure that the libraries are compiled in a way that will run on the Tesla T4 GPU that we're using here. And so you should check to save to Google Drive the weights that we're going to download. That's just going to save time later, although this step is fairly quick. Then there's quite a lot of configuration you can get into, but we're not going to get into it now because we're just going to go with the defaults and just generate some images and then you can come back. So we get to the concepts list. So this is where you need to create concepts that you give a name that will not exist in 
stable diffusion as a concept. So you can just make something up. And in this case, we can just keep this ZWX. And we are going to go with a ZWX robot. So we change each of the cases where we see dog, we're going to change it to robot. And the difference here is that the instance prompt is we say we have a photo of ZWX robot, and that is our model, our object, or it could be a person that you want to place in these scenes. Then the class prompt is just photo of a robot because the model is going to generate a number of random robots and it's going to use the pictures of our robot and the generated robots to understand how to swap the or our robot in and out of different images, different scenarios. And so here's another one, UKJ, just needs to be something that isn't a real word. And so here you could use this for a person. So you could upload five images of yourself or somebody else, and you can make those kinds of avatars. But we're going to go with this object. And this is where this notebook is going to generate a number of robot images for us. So we just run this cell, which is just going to set up our concepts list and it creates some directories and it writes out this list configuration. Now we upload our images. So by running this cell, we just get a regular file picker and going to go to robot images. And so got the, uh, the raw images, they were just taken on iPhone and they are just, no real care has been taken here to have the background eliminated, but it is from different angles, which will help. And so then these have been converted to PNG and they are just 512 by 512 now. So I'm going to upload them. And this is a little bit slow, even though these are very small files. So you can put the files directly into the instance data directory using the file manager of Google Colab if you have a lot of images or large images to upload. So the next cell, we're going to use this Accelerate tool to launch this Python file, which is for training Dream Booth. And we just have one more place where we need to say ZWX robot. Otherwise, everything can be left as is. And we can start this process of training our Dream Booth instance. So it's going to go through a number of download steps and then it's going to go through a fairly lengthy training process. So with the downloading finished, now we're generating the class images. So it's going to generate a number of random robot images for us. And earlier in this file, there was actually a seed value that you can change. And if you set a particular number, then you will always get the same results. So you can repeat results or you can go with a random seed so you get different results every time. So here it's going to go through 13 batches of class images to generate. And this should be turning up in here. So we have got our ZWX images that we uploaded. So they're the iPhone shots. And then here it's now generating random robot images, really very different images that it's generating. And these are going to help with the process of swapping our robot into images later. So this is going to take a while. So we will skip ahead to when this is done. So now we've generated all of those concept images and now it's moving on to the training phase where 
can see it's going to take a little while and so we can skip forward for this too. Okay, so now the training is finished. That took about 21 minutes and it has saved the weights for later for this particular concept, our ZWX. And so now we can continue. We've got the green tick next to this, 21 minutes, so we can move on. Specifying the weights directory, we leave it blank. We take the latest. Nothing else needs to be done here. Now we get to actually the fun part. Generate a grid of preview images from these weights. And so this is pretty close to one of the original images, but what's quite shocking in a way is that the contents of these pictures have changed. This lamp has changed completely and the wall has changed. That's completely different. The chairs have changed and you can see it's placed the robot really well on these different surfaces and it's this one here, image two, that looks more like it actually is. But even though the picture was taken in poor conditions, you know, it's not like taking a picture on just a plain background. It's done incredibly well. So we skip over the next step because we don't need to do that just now and we get into the inference step which I'm just going to start running so it gets going. So we've got our train model and now we are getting to the inference step getting ready for that. So it's setting up this stable diffusion pipeline with our pre-trained model weights. So that's going to take a moment. While we're waiting, here's the seed, which you can set to any number you want or set it randomly. And if you run with the same number, then you're going to get the same results, which can be very handy for reproducing certain results and also testing if you're going to modify the code. So that's run, set the seed. And so we always need to, the original examples can just show you, they trained with pictures of a dog and then one of the examples was this dog in a bucket and they had some examples of that. And so what we can do is photo of ZWX robot, might as well have it in a bucket, why not? And so we're going to generate four images. We're not going with a negative prompt, 50 steps, which you can play with. Fewer steps, it'll be quicker. Higher number of steps, you should get a better result, although you don't want to take it too far. And then everything, source, images, and output, they're all 512 by 512. So if we wanted bigger images, we would need to feed it into another system, maybe a neural network for upscaling. So it's generated our images and <laughs> okay, wow. It has not understood the prompt at all, but it has done something quite incredible because the robot was on a table with a pattern and it's isolated it absolutely perfectly and put it on a floor in some room on another floor with a random chair in the background. It seems to, you know, put a picture on the wall since we had one before. But you really want to get down to this cell where you run this UI for generating images. And here's where you can have an easier time generating different prompts. So not going to bother with the robot in a bucket and go with photo of ZWX robot in front of a Japanese temple. So this cell is going to run all the time because it's running this constant process for us. And then within this, we can generate prompts. And if we want to speed this up, then we can decrease this. Maybe I'll go for just two samples next time. So it's a bit quicker. It is 
nice to get more than one for a prompt though because you can get wildly different results. But let's see what we get. Okay, it's placed the robot really well in front of our Japanese temple. Yeah, and the original idea was take my son's toy and it's going on holiday. It's doing a pretty good job of that. And you know, you could send you can send it anywhere. So just say in New York. Now these prompts are really basic. I'm giving almost no detail. And if you were going to do this as a dream booth in the style of Lenza AI, then you're going to need to get a bit more creative with the prompt. So one site that's pretty good for that, I would ask uh, ChatGPT, but it's a capacity. But this site, Lexica, I've searched for robot and it's a site for prompts to use with Stable Diffusion to generate images. So forgetting the holiday concept, maybe I decide this is pretty good very short prompt, but you can just see what is that going to result in if we generate in our notebook. So here we have robot in New York. It's pretty generic, but that's the thing. The prompt is very generic. So if I just paste this in, then I would need to also say it is ZWX robot by Disney concept artists, blunt borders, rule of thirds. While it's generating that, go and pick something else completely different, like, okay, so retro wave. This is gonna be quite different. Let's see what we get. Hmm, quite different, I mean, massively different, but at the same time, you can see it's the same robot. It's done a really good job of doing a kind of style transfer. Let's try another one. I'm just gonna make sure we say set WX robot. This is a much more detailed prompt. And we could get some better results maybe by increasing the number of steps. That's something to try. And working with negative prompts as you tweak the result that you're looking for. Okay. What I find amazing is that it is doing such an incredible job of keeping the subject recognizable if you want to anyway. When we place it just in a certain scene, then it preserved it almost perfectly. And then here it is being really creative, but not going so far that you wouldn't necessarily recognize it. And you can just do something like, you know, it's a white toy robot, so just make it black. That's gonna make quite a big difference. But let's see, is it just going to change the color and keep the structure? Or how is it going to interpret this? I'm just going to go find one more prompt. Something really different would be trying some kind of drawing now. Mm. Not so keen on this prompt. Very basic. This is maybe a bit more interesting. Robot by Ashley Wood. So this is the kind of thing that is causing a lot of debate because a lot of these prompts reference real artist names. It has kept a lot of the form of the original robot and it really has just made it black. But then with no prompt, it really just puts it in some random location with furniture that certainly I don't have and walls that are nothing like what we have and possibly another little robot here. I just want to see like firing lasers down on a futuristic city just for fun. But the point with this is that with this notebook, with this setup, 
And this is all free as well. If you just use your free Google Colab account, you don't need the Pro and you use Google Drive, as long as you've got a few gigs of space on there, you can create your own Dream Booth and you could even turn this into a business as some people have done. Wow, it's got wheels now. It's not exactly firing lasers down on a city, but it is a uh, very different concept. And I really think this could be a lot of fun for kids to see their favorite toys in different scenarios. And another thing you could do is make a storybook because what Stable Diffusion is not good at generally or mid journey is taking, you create a character and then you have that character stay in each of the frames. Whereas if you follow this style, you could generate a character using Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, Dali, whichever. You could feed that in, five images of that character if you can, and then you could have that character appear in a number of scenes. And that could get much better results. So last one, going to do a ZWX robot by Ashley Wood. So if you have any questions about getting this set up, we haven't gone into the code to actually train the network. We haven't gone into the details of the paper, how it works. In some ways, if you just want to use this as it is, you don't need to know too much about the details. If you want to get into development of this kind of model, then yeah, you would need to. Wow. Okay, <laughs> that didn't work at all. So I'm gonna have to try as the last one. Pencil drawing on a sketch pad, say. I just want to see it because so far all of them have been quite a bit like the original in terms of being quite plasticky. But I want to see if it can turn this into more of a line drawing. And I guess some of these Prompts on Lexica, they're actually for other models, not just stable diffusion. So that's something to bear in mind. Wow. I think that's pretty amazing. It is so much like the original and yet the style is completely as requested. I'm impressed. So. Do let me know in the comments what you get up to with this, but you'd only use it for good purposes. Make yourself some nice profile photos. You can even turn this into a business. You have the license to all of the images generated. The only downside is that training in each case is going to take about 20 to 30 minutes, but still this is something that you can do.